So as you might recall, Paul the Apostle, he's dealing with a bunch of Galatians who are influenced by Juda uh, Ju uh, people who are trying to force them into Judaism. So because of that, Paul is giving arguments right here why they should not fall for that mess and why salvation has to be by faith alone in Christ, not by the works of the law. So we'll read Galatians chapter 3, and we left off at verse 10. Verse 10. For as many as are of the works of the law, so people who are going by the works of the law are under the what? Curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone. So the Bible says, for it is written. So it's quoted. It's written, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. So the Bible says that you're cursed if you don't continue in everything that's written in the law. So that will be found at Deuteronomy chapter 27, please. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 27. Deuteronomy 27, and we'll read verse 26. So the issue here is concerning the law. So in the law of Moses... The Jews stress so much about abiding by these practices. But the problem with the Apostle Paul and the Christians is that they're the complete opposite of this, which is why the Jews hated Paul so much. So they argue right here that it is not by the law at all. It is not by the law at all. Because it is done by salvation, by grace. He mentions grace here. He mentions faith. And these are concerning the Christians. But there are these Jews, see that? Who are getting onto these Christians to follow this. Now, who does that sound like today? I thought this was back at the early ADs, Pastor. Oh no, it's happening alive right now. It's especially happening all over the internet. You hear what these people are trying to say? They're trying to make you say the Hebrew name of Jesus. They're trying to make you say that we want to get closer to the Hebrew. They're trying to make you keep the law. They're trying to change your diet, saying that eating meat is a sin. Yeah, these people are what Paul warned, that these are the people who are going to force you into these kind of ways. And Paul said, no, that is wrong. We're under faith. We're under grace. So this is a very good argument when you use Deuteronomy. So Paul, he's quoting from the scriptures here. So look at Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 26. Cursed be he that confirmeth not what? All the words of this law to do them. And all the people shall say, Amen. So then if some of you, uh, some of you people out there, you're one of these people who are black Hebrew Israelites, or you guys are Seventh-day Adventists, or you guys are out there trying to get into the Hebrew roots movement and stuff like that. And then the Yahweh, Yeshua only, stuff like that. They want people to only go by the Hebrew concept, Hebrew terms, Hebrew practices. Then the problem is this. You can look at your Seventh-day Adventist friend who mentions that we're not saved by the law, but we got to live by the law. So that's how Seventh-day Adventists slide around it. But the thing is this, is that when we read this passage right here, Notice that verse 17, look at, uh, we read Deuteronomy 27, 26, right? Cursed be he that don't do what? All the words on this law, right? Let's look at verse 17. Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark, and all the people shall say, Amen. So he has to keep that, uh, he has to obey that. Not only that, if we were to look through the book of Leviticus, hmm, if we go through the book of Leviticus, there are certain things in the law that says that you cannot even have mixed fabric. Not only that, there are, you can't eat oyster, lobster, and etc. So it's not just uh, you have to be a vegetarian. You've got to realize this, is that there's a lot of other things that they put restrictions on, on what you can eat and what you can't eat. Uh, another thing is that in the law, when the Bible says that if you take God's name in vain, you're supposed to what? Stone them to death, correct? Now, here's the thing. Seventh-day Adventists, they always get around this when you try to make them say, when you try to make them see 
No, we don't go by everything in the law. Obviously, obviously there's a change. Why? Because the New Testament changed it. And then Seventh-day Adventists and then these other guys who want to bind you to the Mosaic law, they're like saying, oh no, it's still working. You know, it's still ongoing. And then when you tell them, okay, then let's stone people to death for taking God's name in vain, then these Seventh-day Adventists will act pious and say, oh no, 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 no. We're, 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 uh, we're talking about moral laws here, we're, and those things were concerning ceremonial, about the sprinkling and all that. But the problem is this. If they really believe that, Paul, okay, what did Paul say at the New Testament? This is New Testament Paul. Paul actually said in the New Testament, you're, if you're going to go by the law, then you should do it. What? Yeah, that's what he said. He said, do it. But he says this, if you're going to go by the law, he says, do all of it. Amen. This is New Testament and this is Old Testament. New Testament is Galatians 3, which we just looked at. It was Galatians chapter 3, verse 10. Cursed be he that doeth not, what? All the things in the law to do them. Deuteronomy, Old Testament said, Cursed be he that doeth not all the things in the law to do them. So you tell that Seventh-day Adventist and tell him this, you're breaking the law of Moses. You think I'm breaking the law of Moses? You are. You look at the Hebrew roots guys, the black Hebrew Israelites and etc. They're not Jew enough. They got to go more extreme Jew than that. And the verse says there, Cursed be he that doeth not all the things of the law. Oh, by the way, here's something that even Jews today broke the law in. Where are your blood animal sacrifices? Yeah. Do you know how many ch chapters, plural, plural, chapters, plural, tell you which animal to sacrifice, how many to sacrifice, and how to perform the altar? And look at your black Hebrew Israelite friend and say, uh, do you have a stock full of sheep? <laughs> When's the last animal you sacrificed? Look at that. See, this is nonsense. So... Notice right here that even Jews themselves today do not perform Judaism completely. So this verse is actually, uh, so use Deuteronomy. That's from the law of Moses, right? Use that for the Jew. Tell them this, is that you are not actually abiding by the Torah. You're not abiding by your religion like you should. And you look at the black Hebrew Israelites who are less Jew than a real Jew, and then you look at those Hebrew roots movements and all those guys, and you'll find out that there's a lot more things in the law they didn't keep. Look at the Seventh-day Adventist, and when he pulls up some kind of clever argument, oh, you know, it's just the, those were things were, that were ceremonial, and then grace makes up for the death penalty for that. And then you tell them this, no, the verse says, cursed be he that doeth not all, all the things in the law. Okay, let's look back at Galatians. <coughs> Galatians 3 is the chapter to memorize which is perfect against anybody who uses Judaism arguments. So this is good for Seventh-day Adventists, this is good against Hebrew Roots Movement, Black Hebrew Israelites, Judaism itself today. Let's keep reading right here. Verse 11, but that no man is justified by the law. So no one is justified. Justified, what that means is to be declared righteous, to be declared righteous. No one is declared righteous by the law in the what? Sight of God. So in God's eyes, no one is considered to be declared righteous. Paul, notice he says right here, it is what? Evident. So this is evidence right here. So this is a sure fact. So when people are trying to bind you to the law, then you tell them this. No, it's evident. Evidence is against this. That's what you got to stress out. You got to stress the fact that evidence stands against the law. Now, do you understand why people online attack the Apostle Paul? They start to attack the Apostle Paul because his writings are tremendously strong and powerful against anyone who's trying to bind you to the Old Testament practices. Let's keep reading right here. It is evident for the what? Just shall live by faith. So this is a very important quote. This came also from Romans chapter 1. Go to Romans chapter 1. The just shall live by faith. That is a famous quote. 
Look at Romans chapter 1 and verse 17, please. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Now, it's either two things. Here's something that Seventh-day Adventists don't get. How can they live their lives by the law? So Seventh-day Adventists, they have a clever way of saying you're saved by faith, but that doesn't mean the law, we get rid of it. The law is there to, uh, for our living, everyday life. But there's a problem with that. Paul told you that if you're going to live by the law, you're, you're under, you have to do everything by the law. And Paul says we're not living under the law. The just shall live by what? Faith. faith. That's what we're living by. We don't live by the law. We live by faith. Amen. The just shall live by faith. So here's the thing, is that what are you living by your life by, friend? Is it by the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, or is it living by the law? That's something you've got to ask yourself. And if you're living by the law, then you're living the wrong kind of life. And this is repeated twice. We see this in Galatians chapter 3, and then we also see this in Romans 1.17. Notice right here, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from what? Faith to faith. Paul is repeating, he's stressing right here, it's only faith, it's faith, it's faith, it's faith. Why do the Seventh-day Adventists try to mingle the law with faith? They always do that. They always do that. The three most annoying people you will ever argue scripture with is a Calvinist, Seventh-day Adventist, and a Jehovah Witness. These three people are the most annoying. The two most annoying people that you will debate doctrine with in a saved Christian church is hyper-dispensationalists and Calvinists. So these Seventh-day Adventists, they will always come up with clever wordings. And when they come up with clever, sly wordings, the thing is, as Paul said, no, it's faith to faith. It's faith. It's not the law. There's no way you can equate law with the faith right here. They always slide their way around that. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at right here, the just shall live by faith at Romans 1.17. This was a very famous verse to Martin Luther. So if you hear this among preachers today, the just shall live by faith, they will occasionally mention Martin Luther's name. Martin Luther, he was a Roman Catholic monk. And then when he was reading the scriptures, he realized that the life he was living under, that it was false, yes. that it was not salvation, yes. but rather damnation. Mm -hmm. So that when he read Romans 1.17, he was like saying, it was the windows of heaven were opened up to him, he said. It was, when it said the just shall live by faith, he realized it wasn't living by the crucifix, it wasn't living by the rosary, it wasn't living by the sacraments, it was by faith. So that became his creed ever since. So this is a famous verse in the Bible, the just shall live by faith. 